All right, David Harry here. Now I've just got myself a new 11th gen Intel NUC. This particular one is the i7 Panther Canyon variant, but I do not have my RAM yet. I'm still waiting for it to be delivered. So before I do my build video for this particular NUC, what I thought I would do is just a quick video where you have a little look at the box, but more importantly, let's do some close up looking at the actual NUC itself and let's see what ports it's got on it and stuff like that. So the first thing that I'm going to do then is a little run around the box. Let's have a look at the information on the box. If there's anything on here that you need to read a bit more carefully, then just pause the video and then continue at your own leisure. But right now we have been looking at the front of the box or the top of the box with the new NUC logo on it. Okay, so suppose this is the front facer of the box. It's just once again telling us it's an Intel NUC and it's an Intel NUC 11 performance mini PC kit. Now to one side of the box and we are getting a little taster of what the nook looks like which is really cool. And then to the back of the box, which is also shown as a picture of the back of the nook. How weird is that? And then this is the other side of the box. And as we can see here, something really important, which I will go into some detail on in another video. And that is the Intel Iris Xe graphics processor that's built into the chipset of this nook. And just to complete the boring run around of a box, here is the underneath with some more boring detail. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just get inside the box and let's just see what's in there. Ooh, and there's the top of the nook. Right, it's just going to be a little bit cumbersome, I think, trying to undo the box and take bits and pieces out as I do this. So what I'll do, I'll just take it all out and we'll go through one thing at a time that's in the box, then we'll end up on the nook itself. Oh, look at that. The first thing out is this little nice cute Intel sticker which says Intel Core i7. And next out is a bunch of paperwork here, and one of these is marked up as integration guide and such. Anyways, the place for this is my filing cabinet on the floor. And next out the box, something that no Intel NUC would be seen dead without, and that is a VESA mounting plate. So you can mount this to the back of a monitor or anything else that uses the VESA mounting system. And also to attach your NUC to the VESA mounting plate and to help you attach that VESA mounting plate to something else, and also to attach some internal drives. Here's a bag of screws. Also a mains power cable for connecting your power supply for the NUC to the electricity that comes out of your wall. And finally, before we get to the star attraction of the show here, here is the power supply for the NUC. And as we can see here, this is quite a hefty one. What it is, this is 19 volts at 6.32 amps, which is 120 watts. Because don't forget, these NUCs are capable of throwing a lot of power down the USB-C cable as well. And so to start off the close-up look at the NUC itself, we'll start with the front panel here. So from this side, the first thing we are seeing is the power button. Button. Then next to that, there is a 3.5 millimeter jack socket. Now that is of the TRRS variety, which will accept headphone and microphone down to one socket. Also as well, next to that, we have a USB 3.1 Gen 2 socket, which is capable of 10 gigabits per second. Now next to that, we have a Thunderbolt connector. Now depending upon where you have a read of the specs for this stuff, even on the Intel site, sometimes it says these are Thunderbolt 4. They're actually only Thunderbolt 3, although they are 40 gigabits per second. I'm not entirely sure what the difference is between 3 and 4 because both of them are 40 gigabits per second. Although I believe there should be other differences beyond that. But nonetheless, it's still a very fast port. Now, above that, we can see four little holes. Now, those little holes are a microphone array and they are very specifically designed for very clear voice work and stuff so things like Alexa should be great on this also behind here somewhere there is going to be an infrared little sensor for doing your little infrared stuff also as well there's mention of some RGB-ness going on here so I don't know maybe the button's got an RGB controller we'll have to have a look at that once I've put it all together now moving on to one of the side panels here as we can see it is mostly a vent so this is going to be really good for airflow however what we have here is an SD card socket or slot now what's really cool about this one is that this is a full-size one now this is also an SDXC but also 
UHS-2. So this is going to support very fast SD cards. And this is the opposite side as well here. So the other side of the nook. And as we can see here, this too has also got a large grill on it. So once again, a really good venting system. Also, what we have here is a Kensington lock system as well. And so on to the rear of the nook. And as we can see right across the top at the back here, we've got an exhaust port. And that is for expelling all the hot air that builds up inside the nook from the fan that's inside. That's something that I'll be testing as I get into this, see how hot that is, see what the temperatures are like and all that kind of funky stuff. Now, underneath all that is a bunch of sockets. Let's have a look at these. So the first one here is a HDMI port, and this is HDMI 2.0A. Now above that, we have another Thunderbolt 3 port. And then next to those two here, we have got two more USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports. Once again, both capable of doing 10 gigabits per second. Now interestingly, next to that, we have a 2.5 gigabits per second Ethernet or LAN socket, which is really cool. Next to that, we have a mini display port as well for more video output. And then next to that, we have our 19 volts DC input, which is where we plug our power supply into. Now, interestingly, as far as all these sockets are concerned, such as display port, HDMI, and also Thunderbolts here, these Thunderbolt ports will also do display port alternate mode. So basically we can get video out of either the back or the front Thunderbolt ports here. So what that basically means is that we can get four 4K video outputs from this computer or one 8K video output. Now the top of the nook is a pretty bland affair. It is just a lid. Now looking at the underneath of the nook, what we have in each corner, we have these little rubber rings with screws in them. Now the rubber rings themselves act as feet and the screws are to screw the base plate into the nook. And also as well, we have four of these little rubber things here as well. Now I'll show you what these are in a second because now I'm going to look inside the nook. So just a quick look inside the nook here because I will be doing more stuff about the inside of the nook. But just quickly what we've got here in the top, there is our little socket there for our M.2, so that's obviously NVMe, and there is the screw to mount it. Also, down here, we have got our two RAM slots. Now, this can take up to DDR4 3200 megahertz speed RAM and up to 64 gigabytes of it as well. Also on here, we have got our little Wi-Fi thing up here. I was going to point at that thing. That's not a Wi-Fi thing. That's the Wi-Fi thing. And the Wi-Fi thing on this one is actually one of the super fast Intel ones, which is Wi-Fi 6 AX201. Now, there's also a whole bunch of like ports and headers in here as well, which you can actually assign to be plugged to other things such as like a lid which can become a USB socket or something like a Wi-Fi charger and things like that. I'll go into that again in other videos. I don't want to get too techy and bogged down in this one. And then on this side here, we have got our mounting system to add a 2.5 inch SATA drive as well. So there's the SATA port and power there. And that drive can either be a mechanical drive or an SSD. It doesn't matter. And it can be up to seven millimeters thick now just interestingly if i can just get this into focus these little things here these little rubber bits here they actually double up inside here to be where the screws go in as well to hold the two and a half inch drive in once it gets slotted inside okay so there we have it then a quick close-up look at this intel panther canyon i7 nook and more specifically just the sockets and things like that so what i'm going to do from here on in i will have a playlist for this particular nook so if you're into these things keep an eye on the channel also keep an eye on the playlist as well i'll be doing a build video really soon with this and then i'm going to be testing it out with certain things like thunderbolt video capture and a few other things like that as well so if you're into that type of stuff defo keep an eye on the channel and keep an eye on what i'm going to be doing with this nook also as well, I will definitely be comparing it wherever possible to my Apple Mac mini as well. Okay, so that should just about wrap it up for this video. Now there will also be links in the description for this video taking you to where you can go and buy this Nook. Now those links will build up over time as I start finding things to either put in the Nook or to connect the Nook to, such as, like I've said, some Thunderbolt devices for doing video capture and stuff like that. So if you're into that stuff, definitely keep an eye on the channel for those things as well also if you've liked the video
video then please give it a massive thumbs up and if you've really really liked the video then please subscribe to my channel and in the process click that bell notification icon thing as if it's going out of fashion anyways i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now